Hi everyone, welcome back. My name's Claire. I'm really excited. I'm about to do one of my really big commission pieces. It's a metre long by 50 centimetres deep. So a really lovely long, long canvas. Um, you might remember um, a few weeks ago, I did this little tiny Dutch pour. This was the test piece for the piece that I'm about to do. So um, I wanted just to experiment with the colours that the client had chosen for this commission. Um, so I did this um, and she loved this so much. She also is having this little piece as well. Um, so it's going to be a Dutch pour, long canvas. Instead of one band of diagonal pour, uh, coloured paint, I'm doing three. Um, it's for her bedroom. It's going above her bed. So um, I'm so excited. So let me show you the colours that are, um, I'm using in this. So such a simple colour palette. So the base, I'm using um, Amsterdam White. I'm using De La Rowney Pearl Black and I'm using silver. So those three colours for the base. So it's going to have a quite marbled effect to the base, a, a variegated base, a marbly effect. And then these are the design colours, really simply. Um, a little bit of De La Rowney Black, De La Rowney Thalo Turquoise, and then the two iridescent Pebio Studio Acrylics colours, green, blue and blue, green. There they look identical, but they're not. These are them mixed up. Even here they look quite similar. This is really quite green and this one is really quite blue. Um, so they're all mixed with Flood Floatrol and I'll put the recipe that I'm using in the description of this video. I've prepared my canvas. I've um, sprayed the back of it and wiped the water on the back just very gently, just so that it tightens up the canvas. As it dries, I think the canvas just tightens and shrinks a little bit so that it's much more bouncy. I've put push pins in the back um, hammered them in and then I've used my spirit level just to level the level of the canvas make sure that it's it's perfectly flat so my consistency I don't know if you'll be able to see from there or not so nice and runny nice and fluid um, and I've mixed I've tried to mix everything to the same consistency so although I use the same recipe for all my paints the um, the iridescent colors the metallic colors have to have just a little bit more water in them because they're naturally just a bit thicker so first thing is to do the marbled base. So to do that, I'm going to I'm going to cover the canvas in white. Then I'm going to add the silver and the black. Right, I'm ready to put the colour on now. I have just spent ages looking at this and I've decided that if you, uh, the idea originally was to have three diagonal lines. I think the canvas is too small for that um, because a it's a metre long, so a third of this is about 33 centimetres. So about that. So I would have a line going quite steeply up there i'm just not sure there's enough room i'm just thinking it's going to look better if i actually think about the canvas in two halves and then did then it would be square and then i could do my light my i do two lines of color now i just hope the client would be happy with that but i honestly think that will actually work so much better the small one is a square so it works well i think because this is a square so if i think of this as two squares I just think that's going to work better. I've just got to make a decision, I think, based on what I think is going to look best. Um, because unfortunately, I can't contact her at the moment. That's what my instinct is telling me to do. You've got to think, I'm going to come up here with the paint. 
but then I'm also going to be fanning it out. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I've got enough room to do three lines. I think it's going to look better. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Right, I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to put down, the worst that can happen is she's not happy, I can do it again, but with three lines. But I think it's just going to look so crowded. It's such a fussy base. I just don't think being too crowded is the best idea. Right, I've worked out where the centre of this canvas is. I've drawn a line on here and it's where that little white splodge is there. I'm going to do a diagonal line of paint. I'm actually going to do it just slightly this side of the centre. I'm just checking my paint consistency and it's just thickened up a little bit since I mixed it. So I'm just adding a little bit more water. Okay, so I'm going to pour a line from this corner to about there. In fact, I might just do it with my stir stick first. Right, brilliant. That was just a very rough, quick, faint line. Good. Now I'm going to start here. Again, I'm going to come to about an inch that side. Yeah, great. I just wanted to do a thin outline so that if it goes wrong, I can, I can, I'm more likely to be able to sort it out. So now I'm just looking again to see if I'm happy. Yeah, I honestly, honestly think two is going to look better than three. So I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to put down a slightly thicker line now of paint. And I'm going to do my little extra bits. Because I want this to fan out beautifully. Right, again, I'm just going to stand back and have a look at the composition of this. So I've got my straight line. I've done one line off to this side, but I've done two up here where there's more space and the same there. And then the opposite here, one extra here and two here where I've got more space. I'm going to do an extra line here because it's the corner and actually, actually I've already done an extra line here that must have yeah just felt right then right that's the green blue down so now I'm going to come in with a little bit of black I'm going to just drizzle this with my stir stick because I don't want a lot I just want a little hint of it And the same thing is happening already that happened last time. I gave in some purple. So the black, there must be, I, I don't know how black is made, but there must be some sort of red base to it or different. I'm not really sure, but it must be, it must have a colour in this black that can create this purple because I can see already where it's over the green. It's got this absolutely beautiful kind of purpley tone to it where it's spreading out into the green. And that's exactly what happened in the practice piece. 
which was really unexpected, but I thought looked really, really pretty. Right, I think that's going to be enough black for now. And now I'm going to come in with the phalo turquoise. So I'm going for reasonably wiggly lines over the top. So all I'm doing is going over where there's already the paint now. Right, and then the iridescent blue-green. Right, I think that is plenty now. Right, the really, really scary bit. Um, so, I'm going to start with this one. And my plan, I think, will be to just blow in one direction in the centre and then blow out um, or at the, either angle. I love it oh my goodness I've got work to do but first first of all it's worked I'm happy there's lots of tweaking I need to do with the composition but wow the colors the colors the cells that are popping up yeah I'm really really happy right I think I could do well what should I do I'm going to play around. I'm going to do lots of blowing around now with by mouth um, just to soften the edges, just to um, create the more the composition and the design I'm wanting.
So here it is. I'm really, really happy, really, really relieved. Um, I went through a couple of times when I thought, oh, is this composition working? Is it right? But now I've finished, I really think it works well. What I'm really happy with is this wonderful sort of curve through the middle that's been created. Um, and it's reasonably, it's reasonably symmetrical. And then you've got this lovely... Um, um, negative space. I think I said it was positive negative space last time because it's not plain here and here and that sort of matches. So I've managed to get this lovely flow of this of this bow and of this one relatively similar. Um, the advantage of doing just the two bows, the two um, layers of colour, is that it, I really could blow this around at the edges and really spread it out nicely. So it's really intense in the centre, but then it just fades and it's quite nice and floaty around the outside. So I, I'm really happy with my decision to do two instead of three. Um, let me show you close up because the cells are just gorgeous. Um, the details are beautiful. Um, so pretty and this is because this is all iridescent paint this is going to be so shimmery and beautiful when it's dry um, you can see the purpley color can you see that in there I'm sorry about the reflections it's it's such a pretty pretty color scheme um, let's go over to this one and in the black and the white again look at the black and the white the cells so the marbling in the base so um, sorry, the, the cells in the base. So I think it does look really quite marbly like. Um, let's come over this way. Again, look, there's that purple colour just in there and in there. And you can get you get a sense of some of the sparkle there, I think. It's so pretty. Um, the first one I did, the practice one, I felt that it looked quite crowded because it was a small canvas. So in comparison... I don't feel this one is crowded um, because it's much bigger canvas and I've only done the two lines of paint. Um, I feel like you get the you get to see the design, but you also get to see the base and you get to appreciate both. Um, so just fingers crossed this dries well. So here's the dry result. Um, I'm, it's dried really well. It's so beautifully smooth. I've started sieving my, flow, my flood floritrol recently and the results are amazing because the surface of the, is, this is just immaculately smooth, perfectly smooth. Um, the colours are just so bold, um, but it's got this really kind of fierce fieriness about it somehow. Um, I think it looks like wrong colours but kind of flames and um I yeah it's just so it's kind of so powerful somehow so moving um so let me let me take you in for a close-up um so I'll show you first of all the the marbled effect just focus look at that so that's just the base and you've got so much movement it's just so dynamic um and then you've got this wonderful wonderful transition between the light and the dark such a stark line there but an irregular line which is what I really really like you've got these amazing cells some of the silver peeking through there um, I just love these really fluted edges so they're, they're quite dramatic edges but it softens it because they're so irregular and bumpy um, again some more beautiful cells there um, and you've got this kind of purpley colour peeking through here and here and here. And it just adds just this other dimension, just this other totally different shade. So I'm so, so pleased with this. Um, and it's it's just like that little um, trial piece I did. It just matches beautifully. Um, and it's just so nice to paint big. I love big canvases. You just have so much room to play with the colours, with the composition. So I find Dutch pour so much easier on a large canvas. So there it is. Great. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this piece. Leave me any comments you want to. Um, and please do subscribe to my channel. Take care, everyone. Bye.